better yet, how did you carry him all the way here? Well, I mean, he is kind of a horse, sort of, and as long as you're a virgin- Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Hello, Romas. This is Romy here. Okay, just I double check if the game music and my my volume was correct. But we are here with Changeling. We're here with Even Still talking about um. What are we talking about? Oh, Spencer. We're talking about Spencer. And anyway, you know more than Faye. Oh yeah, I already read that. Well. I don't know what's really going on with him or anything, but my main concern right now is the part of the reason why they're so reluctant to let you go because you got tangled with my family. I worry we did more harm than good when we tried to help you. Well, that isn't true at all. The changing thing was a pretty serious situation that needed to be taken care of. Yeah, but it might have been best to let you try to help get help from the murderer or anyone else. Brenna, my dad, and I have a stri strange relationship with the Unseely and a long history. If by helping you, we raise their ear, I just don't know the payoff is worth that. Wait, how am I still paying them? Don't I have to repay them somehow? <laughs> I mean, we did the whole ritual with you. If we just dumped the potion on your head and called it a day, they might not have taken as much notice. As it is, it's clear you've got an actual relationship with them. You suddenly colored and looked away. With us, I mean, you know, that you actually know us and everything. It wasn't some coincidence or momentary lapse of judgment or whatever. I think you're jumping to conclusions. We don't knew they wouldn't have started going after Spencer regardless of who helped me. Maybe, but I feel like they should have moved on by now with a simple broken contract, but they haven't. I know they can be really stubborn about things, but this feels more, it feels like more... Feel, this feels like more, sorry. And look, they lost my dad, they lost Brenna, me, now you. Four losses all related to the same family is a lot to deal with. And changelings are particularly valuable. I just worry that we really angered them with this. Four losses. You and kept talking, but I kind of tuned him out because, a bit because somehow that felt wrong. They lost me, but, but I didn't know why. It was like an old memory that I couldn't quite fully latch onto. On top of that, they could be worried my dad gave you fairy secrets that he shouldn't have that would definitely make them very reluctant to let you go. I don't know why it felt like the Fae had lost Spencer too, because they'd never had him to begin with. I was there. I was their target from the start. But why didn't that feel right? Even pause, give me a curious look. Because it's not. Because I still haven't figured out why they got me, right? The reason they got me was because I traded uh, Spencer's position. To be with me instead. Michiko? Fairies and Spencer. What's wrong? I was just... I don't know. It feels like there's something I'm forgetting. Something important. And really, Spencer said the same thing to me earlier today. What do you think you're forgetting? I gave him a disparaging look. If I knew that, it wouldn't be forgotten, would it? Yes, I knew that. Thank you. I was hoping for a general idea. I mean, what is it in relation to? Spencer and fairies. You think there's some connection there, besides you? I don't know. I mean, I told you before, when we were kids, we both saw them. I mean, I think we did. It's all a bit faded by now, but I do remember seeing weird things, and Spencer did as well. All the time, frequently, everywhere. I've been thinking about that, actually. Maybe the two of you did have some hidden fairy heritage. It would explain the weak magic aura he has. <laughs> and it could be when the fate targeted you in the first place. Targeted me? Yeah, so Changeling? What if, what if I wasn't their target? What do you mean by that? I don't know, it's just a feeling, and thinking about it makes my head hurt. But Spencer told me earlier that he's been training about the past, and that he feels like he's forgetting something, and I'm having the same feeling. Maybe there really is more going on here than we know. Can you, can you tell me more about your childhood here? Maybe we can work it out when this contract happened, with the events were surrounding it. It might give us some hints. It's possible your history with the Fae and Pine Hollow is more important to what's happening now than we thought. Um, sure. I don't really know where to start, though. I mean, we were born here. There's a lot of history. When you first remember seeing fairies, I don't, I don't really know. I feel like we could see them for, for forever, really. I had forgotten for so long, but now that it's all come back to me, I can't recall the time in my life we didn't see them. Well, I guess I didn't really forget. It's more like I just sort of eventually started thinking it was all pretend play. Just imaginary friends and that kind of thing. 
But now, I mean, with everything that happened, I started wondering if maybe it wasn't pretend. The more I thought about it, the more it felt like a dream and more like it was all real. I mean, we'd see faces in the trees, strange little people, we'd hear voices in the woods, singing. This is going to sound weird, but my grandmother had this apple tree and... There was this old man that lived in it. She always said she had to leave the last apple of the season for him, so there would be apples the next year. I asked if she could see him, but she said that she had only seen him once or twice when she was a little girl. But that tree came from a sapling her mother had given her, a sapling from a tree at the house she grew up in. Grandma said the old man had followed her from her childhood home. Sounds like your grandmother was also sensitive to fairies. It definitely sounds like something that runs in your family. There was also this lady in green that Spencer and I used to see in the woods a lot. Long blonde hair, green dress. She was weird. Every time she saw us, she'd take our hands and let us back home as if we were lost. Even if we were just playing or knew where we were, she always, always led us back home. She had this really weird way to walking, sort of lopsided and limping, and I swear one time I saw a tail. <laughs> Sounds like a glay stick, maybe? You're lucky all she did was let you home. They can be pretty dangerous. There was this weird hill in the woods behind her house that we used to play on a lot. She hated when we went near her. What? You would have the weirdest look on his face when I mentioned that when I mentioned that hill. A fairy hill. Was that a fairy hill, Chico? I don't I don't My mind went blank and there was a sharp pain behind my eyes. Hey, Chico? Sorry, just sudden headache. You and sat back against the cushions, regarding with a serious look on his face. A headache when you try to remember that hill. And one when you try to remember something about Spencer vanishing as a child. What is it? Well, I can't say for sure based on just what you told me, but I bet part of what you're forgetting is that someone doesn't want you to remember what happened at that hill. What do you mean by that? It's possible someone put a seal on your memories about that place. Something meaning... Something to deal with all this. The changing thing, Spencer, me. A strange hill, a protective fairy that wanted you to stay away from it. And I happen to know there is a fairy mound here in Pine Hollows that's been dormant for about 10 years, give or take. A dormant fairy hill. There was that feeling in the reticent memory. Reticent? Reticent? I don't know. And that pain. So it all goes back to that hill then. Somehow that felt right. I couldn't say why. But even so, where did Spencer fit into all of it? I couldn't help but feel this. All of it. It was my fault. That I should have should have protected him better. Not to mention that it felt like I'd somehow put my parents in harm's way with all this as well. And Ewan's family also got pulled in with their history. I was certain they prefer not to be. They prefer to not be dealing with this again. I guess you don't have any siblings, right? What the fuck? Why did you just want to ask him that? That's just so random. Sorry for dragging you into this. Don't be. It feels like it feels more like we dragged you in. I don't see how that could possibly be the case. If it wasn't for me, none of this. It's not your fault. Look, I'm not worried about Dad. I know he can hand. I know he can look after himself. I'm sorry I dragged him into it. Don't be. I think he was looking for an excuse to do something crazy and get out of the bakery for a while. And the curse of the disappearing pastries. He grinned. Yes. And listen, he's Faye, but he's not a bad person. I never thought he was. I sighed softly. I'm worried about my family too. I know. It must be nice to be able to share everything with them about both worlds. Sometimes, I guess. I'll never be able to tell mine. I mean, that's what everyone keeps saying. Well, it would be pretty dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous now and they don't <laughs> they don't know anything. There are worse things than secrets, believe me. I could definitely imagine. I hate had to admit it. Or had to I had to admit I felt a little better after all that. Though I'd feel better if I had solid answers. You and I continued to talk for the rest of the afternoon. Some of it was talking about the current situation or me sharing more about my childhood. Some was you and explaining various things about fairy side and me. All of it was punctuated by texts from Jason, mostly silly things about my brother being grumpy or whatever. At several points, I was seriously worried about my family, probably thinking I'd gone insane. I couldn't wait to go get back and deal with the fallout with Jason's exuberance. Allie also checked in with us. A lot of it just felt like weeding, though for what? I wasn't sure. News of some kind, I guess. But there was never any sort of news that came. I don't really know when I fell asleep, but sleep wasn't restful at all. It was trouble with strange dreams that hearing music, whispering voices, and dark, echoing spaces. And a deep, uncomfortable feeling of needing to find something and knowing I was going to lose myself forever if I did. The only good thing about it was not waking up to my brother trying to break into my room in the middle of the night. 
I felt like, okay, October 27th. Jesus, this is long as fuck. <laughs> I felt like I'd barely gotten an hour of sleep when the clicking of the club door woke me up. I sat groggily looking around. That's some pretty amazing bed hair you've got there. I made a face at her, <laughs> noting that Ewan had relocated to one of the chairs. He looked wide awake. I had no idea when Allie had arrived. What time is it? Nearly eight in the morning. What? I don't feel like I slept nearly that long. You look like you were having bad dreams. I wasn't sure if I should wake you or not. I stretched lightly. I don't really remember dreaming anything, to be honest. I rubbed my head, biting back another yawn. So what's um happening with everything? I haven't heard from Drayson since pretty early this morning. What did he say? Well, it was close to 3 in the morning. All he said was, I see what Michiko means. That's it? I stood quickly. The last drags of step, slip, step. Sleep draining away. We need to go check... Just calm down. Maybe he's still asleep. He is pretending to be you, but sick. Yeah, maybe he's asleep, and maybe my crazy bear possessed brother killed him in his sleep. That escalated quickly. I don't think Spencer has regrets to being capable of murder just yet. Yeah, you haven't seen how creepy he's been lately. I seriously don't know how you people can be so calm about all this. Well, I know this all seems dramatic and upsetting for you, but, well, we're kind of used to it. That's not reassuring. Look, you stay here, I'll go check it out and see what's going on. We can't really have an extra Michiko showing up at your house. I'm not the extra, I'm the real one, thank you very much. Oh, Jason! The door to the library suddenly slammed open and a familiar pink-headed unicorn burst into the club room. You win, big problem. Is that? Jason, um, Jason, what on earth did you do? Excuse me? Um... Wait, <laughs> wait, you carried him over here? What the hell is going on? Put me down. Well, you can see the room now. He saw me. I mean, the glamour kind of started to fade and he saw it. And I just, did you kidnap my brother? I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> kidnap the guy that like caught you in a lie. I guess that sounds correct, maybe. I said put me down. Startled Jason did just that, and Spencer stood there, red face glaring at everyone, looking like he might bolt for the door any second. Did you really carry him all the way here over your shoulder like that? Better yet, how did you carry him all the way here? Well, I mean, he is kind of a horse, sort of, and as long as you're a virgin- Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, well, I definitely described Spencer. Well, s someone tell me what the hell is going on here? What does that mean? As long as you're a virgin, Drayson can carry you? Wait. Go back. Rewind. I'm not done with that conversation. I guess now is as, <laughs> as good as a good a time as any. Why don't you sit down? This may take a while. Chapter 9, Road to Fairy. Wow, we're now going to Fairy? <laughs> it took a little while. Okay, it's just showing that it's October 27th again. I was gonna be like, wow, it's a whole new day. Brand day? Okay. Brand new day. It took a little while to convince Spencer that no one was going to eat him, maim him, kill him, or basically do any other horrible thing to him. He also wasn't convinced Drayson was a unicorn, which nearly sent Drayson to tears until Ewan took him out to calm him down. Poor sensitive little soul. Spencer was desperately trying to have this hat, uh, wait, a hat moment, but was too terrified to actually do much a hang at having caught me out <laughs> in all my evil secrets. Instead, he was huddled on one end of the sofa, looking like he might cry as well. What is going on? I mean, I knew, I knew that Michiko wasn't normal, that there were weird things happening. I didn't expect all this. I didn't expect you to be a part of it. Then it's time to change your expectations. Good people exist on the side of things, Spencer. On this side of things. Like me, Trayson, Ewan, and me. I was getting to you. <laughs> I should have been at the top of the list. Thank you very much. Hey, you're not the boss of me. I should be that too. I should have known the two of you wouldn't take any of this seriously. Hey, I'm taking this seriously. You creeped around my bedroom for like three nights like a possessed stalker. I'm completely serious. Since I looked away awkwardly, I don't remember doing anything like that. Yeah, that's why you look like a puppy that just got caught doing something naughty. He glared at me. I just remember having strange dreams the last few nights. Stranger than usual. They often work through dreams, so that's part that that part's not all that strange. There you go about fairies again. Are you even serious with that? Fairies, unicorns, that stuff is all real. I don't believe that. So help me if you don't stop being a pain. I'm going to drag you and back in here, yank his head off, and beat you to death with it. 
You're going to do what with my head now? Nothing. Nothing. Your head's going to stay prettily there, Ewan. Wow, Michiko, that was kind of extreme. Shut up. <laughs> Spencer, you may not believe us, but for the record, Ewan is Faye. A dull hand, to be precise. Though I staunchly object to any part of my body being used as a murder weapon. A Delahan. Headless horseman. He <laughs> rolled his eyes. Yeah, right. Is this guy even serious? After everything he's been seen, he's going to sit there and say he doesn't believe us. Just, Ali, do some magic. Just because I've seen some weird stuff doesn't mean I'm going to believe fairies or are real. Or whatever else you people want to try to tell me. I'm not going to believe something stupid like headless horsemen exist. Give me a break. I want the truth, not some stupid lie. So you only believe what you see then. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He set his hand on the top of his head and you and I don't think that's actually a good No, I think this is one time it's warranted. I thought you couldn't control <laughs> Look at Spencer's face. It gave his head a solid yink and with a distressingly a squishy sound the flesh pulled apart and a spiral green smoke escaped He gets much better at it when he's mad. I can see that. Well then uh uh not sure what he'd been thinking of, to, of saying to that little demonstration. But before he could get anything out, his eyes were back and he slumped down on the sofa. Yuan just let out a very annoyed sigh. Well, this has gone well. Thanks a lot, Yuan. I'm here to help. You'd think, given, given everything he's been through, he'd be a little bit more immune to the shock, wouldn't you? I wonder if the fainting thing is genetic. <laughs> very funny. Now we have to wait for him to wake back up. Maybe he'll be a bit more reasonable when he does. Based on what I've seen so far, I won't count on it. Then we'll have to keep trying until he listens. Stubbornness only goes so far. He'll eventually have to listen. I hope. Hey, Sleeping Beauty. I'm not saying I believe you yet. I just... Until a few days ago, Michiko was a changeling. That's right. I did read that in your journal. Wait, what? You wrote that? I, I was looking for answers. You aren't even supposed to be able to read that code anymore. You said you forgot it. He shifted uncomfortably. I couldn't believe he'd snoop my journal, much less actually lie to me about our code. That hurts my feelings so much back then, too. The idea that he'd forgotten something that had been just for the two of us. That moment was probably when I really had to face the fact that he hated me. Jerk. I don't know what all Michiko wrote in that journal, but if you read it, then surely you're kind of understanding what's happening here. I didn't think it was real. I thought she was just writing things to throw me off. I mean, there was so much weird stuff in there. Jeez, what did you take me here for? I thought you were, I mean, an imposter. I mean, technically, I sighed softly. Well, in the end, you weren't wrong in a way. But I don't get it. If you were changing, why? I mean, that Michigo was an imposter, right? And you're the real one? But then how do you remember everything? <laughs> yeah, the whole changing thing is a bit more complicated than that. Let's just say I was part imposter and part real Michiko. And I'm all real Michiko. That's soul transfer stuff? Yeah. Then what about, um, him? I mean, he was you, right up until he, you know, kidnapped me. <laughs> Jason gave a sheepish smile as he toyed with the end of his braid. Sorry about that, I just panicked a little. That was technically Ali's fault anyway. Hey! You're the one that suggested a spy. A spy? We weren't so sure what was going on with you since you started sleepwalking. Ali suggested we have someone in, someone stay in the house and pretend to be me. That way we can work out what the, who the fairies are targeting now. Drayson has nothing to do with changing things though. I guess that explains why you spent all evening calling me Winston. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't remember your name. And I still don't understand what you mean by targeting. Well... It seems like the fae are pretty reluctant to let Michiko go. We're not totally sure why, since there could be a lot of reasons. Regardless, they've been influencing you while you sleep, and we weren't sure what they were planning. We still don't know, really. Well, I think if they just wanted Spencer as some kind of revenge, they'd have him leave the house. But instead, it seems like he was trying to get in Michiko's room. Either way, they wanted to use him to get to her, or he did try to go outside several times. I was going to say that. Maybe they're targeting you both. Look, I don't know if I buy all this. I mean, I guess some of it aligns with things I've seen myself. But if the f Fae want to kidnap us or something, aren't they being kind of ineffectual? I mean, you guys are saying they control me when I sleep. Can't they just have me wander off to wherever they want to take me? They may be able to influence you in your sleep, but that doesn't mean you they can just they can just control you like a puppet. So carting you off to the nearest gate might not be the easy, be that easy yet. 
mean? I was literally trapped in a fairy spot and she didn't manage to make me walk off in the middle of the night either. I always woke up before getting too far away. In any case, it's more likely they're looking for some way to trick you both into another contract. It's the surest way to make certain you don't escape again. Another contract? I feel like I'm still missing pieces of the puzzle here. Basically, fairies enter into some kind of contract with a family or individual before they do the whole changing thing. We're assuming that somehow I was entered into this changing contract as a child. They swapped me out partially because they don't just nab you and run off these days. No, no, that's the old-fashioned way of doing things. They play a lovely little game of musical chairs with your soul, then use you as camouflage so their kidnapper doesn't get caught out. Because fairies suck at acting human. So that's why you're able to change like that. Change? I mean, you know, your face and stuff, your hair. Now I'm the one confused. What are you talking about? When did I do that? Well, five years ago, for one, when, when my eye, he put two fingers up to his injured eye, sighing softly. I don't remember what happened back then, Spencer. I really don't. I know you haven't ever believed me, but if what you're saying now is true, then I guess it might make sense you wouldn't remember. But you tell me what happened, what you saw back then. Oh shit, I'm over time. <laughs> this is where we need to stop. Hopefully Spencer tells me the whole story, because it didn't mind, mind erase his, him. I can't speak today for some reason. They didn't wipe out his memories. They wiped out mine, or locked mine technically. So Spencer, if you could tell me everything right now, that would be really helpful. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.